make it hurt. It's, it's all right. It's the, it's the front part, the front part more than the back. To the Right Reverend Samuel Lawrence Green Sr., Presiding Prelate, Sister Phyllis N. Green, Episcopal Supervisor, Sister Sandra Anderson, Episcopal Women's Missionary Society President, Sister Dr. Otto McFadden, Episcopal Young People's and Children's Division Director, Sister Eva M. Grant, Northeast Conference Branch WMS President, Sister Hope Grant McQueen, local WMS president. Sister Barbara Stenny, local YPD director. Presiding elder Joseph Postel. Sister Roxanne Postel, aerial consultant. Reverend Merritt B. Graves, pastor. My sisters and my brothers in mission, good morning. The doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. O Lord, is in his holy temple, and all the earth keeps thy honor. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer.
our morning hymn. This is my mission. Blessed with his goodness, blessed with his love, blessed with his showers that come from above, blessed with his sunshine, blessed with his air. I'll go on helping everywhere. Chorus, this is my mission, this is my prayer, helping the needy everywhere. This is my mission, this is my prayer, helping the needy everywhere. Please join the men's choir in singing this hymn in its entirety.
Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we've come this morning to this place at this time to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your ever-present grace and your many mercies. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another sunrise. We realize that with another day comes another chance, another chance to grow closer to you, another chance to serve in your name. Father, there are those among us who are lost, lonely, distressed. They, too, are your children. Touch them, Father. Let them know that you are the way out of their helplessness, their hopelessness, their despair. Lord, there is poverty, hunger, and wars raging not only in distant lands, but right here on the streets of America. Wars that none of us ever signed up for. Lord, it is my prayer, my simple but fervent prayer, taken from the words of a song, that while on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. Lord, this is a servant's prayer. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Scripture is James 2, 15 through the 16th verse, reading from the New International Version. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Greetings to all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate our annual Church Missionary Day. This year's theme, our calling to empower the family, church, and community. This is especially relevant as Mount Zion joins the global church in its work to restore hope and faith in the lives of its members and the larger community. In the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Women's Missionary Society is our vision focused entirely with more than 135 years of service committed to winning souls for Christ and championing health, economic peace, and social justice issues. Through their work locally and globally, our church's own McAllister Witherspoon Missionary Society embodies this mission and faithfully executes outreach, outreach activities on behalf of Mount Zion. Some of our 2021-2022 accomplishments through our efforts are as follows. We contributed financially to the March of Dimes, donated care packages to the families at McLeod Hospice, contributed financially to individuals infected and affected with HIV, donated love baskets to the senior citizens at Mount Zion Apartments and also here at the church. We donated over 200 bags of peppermint treat bags to Panetta Health Nursing Home and also Carlisle Senior Care, just to name a few. The goal of the McAllister Witherspoon Women's Missionary Society are achieved through prayer, service, and witnessing. We now have 51 WMS Society members in our society here at the church. Our programs coincide with the mission and vision of the Women's Missionary. And I would like to say thank you to Reverend Graves and Mrs. Uh, McGraves for being a strong support system for me doing this with the WMS. Together we are a team. Thank you all so much.
At this time, we would like to recognize our visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning, can you please stand and give us your name and church affiliation? If you are visiting with us and have decided not to stand, on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Merritt B. Graves, our First Lady, Liz Graves, and the entire Mount Zion AME Church family, we welcome you and thank you for worshiping with us this morning. We hope to see you again. I would like to share a couple of announcements. The Florence Dillon YPD will be holding its self-denial program today at 5 p.m. via Zoom. Zoom information is posted on our page. Please support our youth. The district's church school convention is scheduled for June the 25th at St. Luke in Johnsonville. The Christian Ed Department is selling t-shirts with the name of each church on, on the district to be worn at the church school convention. Costs are $11 for sizes 2T through extra large, $13 for sizes 2X and 3X, and $15 for sizes 4X through 6X. If you plan to attend and want to purchase a t-shirt, please be prepared to place your order on next Sunday. Sister Merlin Israel will take orders on next Sunday only, as the orders must be placed by June the 1st. Popcorn sales for the building project begin tomorrow. Dr. Deborah Sweeney will now say a few words about the popcorn sales. Maybe.
Thank you. One last announcement. Today is Compassion Sunday, and Reverend Graves will comment on this later in the service. Thank you. It is prayer time a time when we can all go to Jesus on an individual basis with all of our cares, our concerns. If you would, while you are whispering a prayer, we have two members who are in the hospital, Ms. Cowrie Bacot and Bobby Kelly. We have several members who have funeralized family members. Sadie Washington lost her son Cynthia White, a brother. Gordo and Debbie Rogers, they funeralized an aunt and an uncle. So if you would, if you would, just whisper a prayer in remembrance and in care for them. I don't know what God has done for you, but I am a walking, talking testament to the goodness of God. But I tend to believe that if I'm not the only one, I can't be the only one. There have got to be other people with a testimony. Others who can bear witness, who can tell others about the goodness of God. And if you would, if you would just bow your heads right where you are and just whisper a prayer to the man who has done so much for you, so much for me. Amen.
Thank you, mighty male court. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I am privileged, and it is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker for our Women's Missionary Society annual day observance. Dr. Arlene B. Wallace, daughter of Mrs. Carrie Taste and the late Mr. Joe L. Taste of Cross, South Carolina, <clears throat> excuse me, is the soon to be retiring principal at Mayo High School for Math, Science, and Technology in Darlington, South Carolina. This is her 38th year in education and her 22nd year as a principal. Dr. Wallace received her baccalaureate degree in chemistry from Claflin University and a summa cum laude graduate. She gradu graduated Winthrop University with a master's degree in educational administration and supervision and received her doctorate in educational leadership from Nova Southeastern University, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She is looking forward to her official graduation ceremony on June 10th, 2022. Some of her affiliations are inclusive of the following. Member of the South Carolina Association of School Administrators, Darlington County Principals Association, South Carolina State Beta Club Council, and South Carolina Athletic Coaches Association. In the fall, she will be the hearing officer for Darlington County School District and will open her business as an educational consultant. Under her leadership at Mayo High School, the school has won several Palmetto Gold Awards from the South Carolina Department of Education. They have received a 100% graduation rate. The school was selected a National Blue Ribbon School and earned the Palmetto's finest award from the South Carolina Association of School Administrators. Mayo has been included in Newsweek's America's Top High Schools and the U.S. News and World Reports, America's Best High School, where it was most recently ranked number four in South Carolina for two years in a row. Some of Dr. Wallace's commendations are the Iota Omicron Sigma Chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Lady of Distinction Award, the Alpha Beta Beta Chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Citizen of the Year, the Darlington County Chamber of Commerce Educator of the Year, the Darlington County Principal of the Year, and most recently, the South Carolina Principal of the Year finalist. She is married to Mr. Roosevelt Wallace of Darlington, South Carolina, and they are the parents of three children, three grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Dr. Wallace is a member of Mount Zion, African Methodist Episcopal Church, where the Reverend Merritt B. Graves serves as her pastor. After another selection by the mighty male chorus, I present to you one of our own, our sister in Christ, and an ambassador for Christ, Dr. Arlene B. Wallace.
again for the mighty male chorus. <laughs> Giving honor to God, the source of all my strength. Reverend Merrick Graves, our esteemed pastor. Mrs. Liz Graves, our fly and fabulous first lady. <laughs> Miss Eva Grant, Northeast Conference president. And Miss Hope McQueen, our local president. Ministerial staff, program participants, officers, members, and friends of this great church. Also want to acknowledge that one of my sorority sisters came in this morning. Thank you so much, sweetheart. But I also want to acknowledge my rock, my safe place to fall and support, who has made me a better person these last 10 years. Mr. Roosevelt Wallace. Right. God blessed the both of us with a second chance of love. Thank you, Sister Eva Grant, for your fine introduction. Sometimes I can't believe God's awesomeness and how far he has brought me. This stuttering little girl that was raised up on a farm in the big city of Cross, yeah, you can laugh, cause it's, but it's my big city. That's where, I, that's where I hail from. Raised by my grandparents and supported by my single parent, my mother, until she met the man who we called Papa Joe. God is good. Good morning. I just want to let you know that it is truly an honor to be asked to come before you today to acknowledge the work of the women of this great organization. Will the ladies of the McAllister Witherspoon Women's Missionary Society please stand? Let us give them a round of applause. <laughs> and as your speaker today, I just want to say thank you for your service. Sister Grant has already given you the, um, the scripture for this morning, and the theme has already been mentioned, but I want to repeat it again. It's our calling to empower the family, church, and community. The, national, the New International Version of the scripture, James 2, 15 through 16, suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? My subject today, and I took it from my students, do you understand the assignment? <laughs> do you understand the assignment? There once was a little poor boy who spent his days going door to door selling newspapers to pay for school. One day he was walking his route. He started feeling low and weak. The poor boy was starving, so he decided to ask for food when he came to the next door. The poor boy asked for food but was denied every time until he reached the door of a girl. He asked for a glass of water. But seeing his poor state, the girl came back with a glass of milk. The boy asked how much he owed her for the milk, but she refused payment. Years later, the girl, who 
was now a grown woman, fell sick. She went from doctor to doctor, but no one was able to cure her. Finally, she went to the best doctor in town. The doctor spent months treating her until she was finally cured. Despite her happiness, she was afraid she couldn't afford to pay the bill. But when the hospital handed her the bill, it read, paid in full with a glass of milk. <laughs> Have we helped a young boy or girl who needed to be fed physically? Have we followed the calling <coughs> to help those in need? <clears throat> As an educator, we see statistics. The African American students are still struggling in school at a rate that surpasses other ethnic groups, especially after COVID. African American statistics with reading in the third grade is still used to determine the number of prisons that will be built. The achievement gap is sometimes 20 to 30, percent, 30 percentage point away from other ethnic groups. With the impact of COVID and our current economic status, the number of children living in poverty will quadruple. Single parent homes, divorce, single parent homes, divorced homes, physical, mental, gang rape, sexual abuse, and the list goes on. It is not that they can't, they just need a helping hand. This information gets grimmer and grimmer every time we listen to the news. But Mount Zion, do you understand the assignment? Life is a calling of service to others. It is in caring for others that as a derivative, you'll find your own life enriched. We can't be God's given. The scripture says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. If life is a calling of service to others, it doesn't just mean in your spare time. Serving others in campuses, serving more than volunteering for worthy projects or writing a check for a commendable organization. While those actions are vitally important also, Please do recognize that your daily activities can be embedded with service to others. This start, starts with an appreciation of the God-given God -given dignity and worth of each individual and how you incorporate this attitude throughout every hour of your day, whether working for pay or not. Just like that little boy, we don't know what God can do with, with his little children. When we plant seeds of compassion, it is years down the road before we see it, if we see it at all. But please know, the seed will grow. You may be entertaining angels. Hear my Lord, send me. Jesus fed 5,000 men, not including women and children, because he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Do you understand the assignment? Are you ready to work? You may not find WMS in the Bible, but the women of the Women's Missionary Society encompasses the essence of Proverbs 31, 10, through 31, a virtuous woman. With God's help, we are always praying for our families, churches, and communities. We are there to lend a helping hand to all that we come in contact with. The WMS goal is to help those local and abroad through faith, with love for Jesus and humanity, helping others in need, encouraging one another, having a heart for for prayer and being committed to God's word. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up of wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary 
and they shall walk and not faint. We stand on the shoulders of WMS leaders who have led the way through a legacy of service. We continue to build this legacy under the leadership of Dr. Deborah Taylor King, our connectional president. Sister Supervisor Phyllis Green, our Episcopal supervisor. Mrs. Sandra Anderson, seventh Episcopal president. Miss Eva Grant, Northeast Conference president. Miss Myra Palmer, Florence Darling, Florence, you know, I want to get Darlington in there. Florence Dillon Area Chairperson. Miss Roxanne Postel, our area consultant, and Miss Hope McQueen, local president. Here am I, Lord, send me. WMS. Do you understand the assignment? COVID didn't stop us from doing God's work. It just made us more determined. God has a bigger plan for our lives than we have for ourselves. God may put us into positions of leadership or influence so that we can complete his plan and purpose to soar in a legacy of service. God uses ordinary people like you and me to accomplish the extraordinary things for him. Who would have thought that I could be a principal of a little small school? I'm going to call it small. I only have, I got less than 400 kids. But it's a small school with a big heart where we also focus on building a culture of love and relationships. Who has Two, not one, two national blue ribbon recognitions. My assignment resulted in 38 years of touching the lives of many, giving students opportunities versus excuses. I didn't get the assignment in my earlier years because of life's ups and downs, but through prayer. I finally understood my life's assignment. My last assignment for the last 26 years was to touch lives by teaching our students to love, to give back, to work hard, and to be prepared. Church, do you understand the assignment? Acknowledging each individual, individual's value and worth is the first step towards service to others. In addition to embedding service in your daily tasks and work, you have fine examples right here in Mount Zion of how you enrich lives with direct service to the needy or others. You listen to the list that Sister McQueen uh, mentioned. All of this was done during COVID. The reason I joined this church was the way you treated my children. I was just bragging to Reverend Graves last Sunday, Mount Zion, you train up children in the way they should go. All are welcome there. Look at how you greet and treat others when they come through those doors. You welcome all. That's why I love being a greeter. Yeah, I look small too. But I love being a greeter because it makes a difference of how you make people feel because I remembered how you made me feel when I walked through those doors. Do you understand the assignment? Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches unselfishness. Studying what the Bible says about concern for others creates an understanding that reaches out is, that is important to God. Ministering to others is at the top of God's priority list. Jesus said to love one another. Jesus himself came to serve and not be served. The Apostle Paul exalted his disciple Timothy to take what he has learned and give it to reliable people who will in turn do the same for others. God invented the idea of pay it forward. Giving of oneself is more than a responsibility. It is a privilege. It is evidence of your faith. 
And when you submit to something bigger than yourself, you will realize your true potential, finding real happiness and fulfillment through the service of others. If we claim to know him, we should live, walk, act as he would. Knowing him is more than simply quoting scriptures and going to church. It's actually living the word as unfolds, as it unfolds day to day. Here am I, Lord. Send me. We must be about our Father's business. The New International Reader's version of that same scripture says, Suppose a brother or sister has no clothes or food. Suppose one of you say to them, Go, I hope everything turns out fine for you. Keep warm, eat well. And suppose you do nothing about what they really need. Then what good have you done? Mount Zion, we have to take care of God's children. Do you understand the assignment?
Everything, everything has been said. But it is now time for us to look in here. God does not change. We must be the one to change. Don't walk out the same way you came in. Ask God, come into my heart. Say, Lord, I need you. finished my course, and I kept the faith. But if you don't know the assignment, you can't finish the course. So it's important that we understand our assignment. And, and, and Paul didn't say, I finished y'all's course, he said, I finished my course. Right. Everyone has to understand their own assignment. Right. And when you understand the assignment, it's much easier to complete the assignment. I tell these educators, so if you don't understand it, you can't <laughs> get it right. right. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace. 
thank you, Women's Missionary Society, for a wonderful annual day. I do have one question for the missionaries. Is there an asking that you have of the congregation for today? Because I have not heard, and if not, I know next Sunday y'all do a little something, but is there an offering that you're asking for us, if not today, for next Sunday? Let us know what y'all want us to do to support missions. Yes, we're asking $10 and next Sunday. $10 and next Sunday, all y'all now. All right. That's all y'all. <laughs> and I'm one of y'all. Right. So I'm going to pay my insurance. Thank you so much for a wonderful, a wonderful service, all of our worship uh, participants, program participants. Thank you so much for what you've done. Let me just say that I, I have, uh, on last week when I was talking about graduations, I think I left off the name of Justice Wilson. And Justice here today. Justice will be graduating from South Florence on June 4th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Now, are these graduations, I see uh, Zayden might be missing. Are the graduations open to anyone? Do you have to have tickets or is it back to normal? You got to have tickets. Oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, those of us who can't go will be praying for you and waiting for you to get here on your Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some of the people going off to college, they like checks. <laughs> they like checks, y'all. And everybody's been invited. I just read it. All, right. All of our young people, let's, let's do what we can to support them and let them know that we're still behind them. Amen. Amen. I'm asking, though, that all of our graduates, and like I said before, if you graduated uh, since COVID when we were out of church, and I know we did one year's recognition when Loyal graduated, but I don't think we've done any since then. If you've not been recognized and have graduated since the onset of COVID, Please give us your names, your graduation information, and also we'd like to know where you're planning to go to school or what you're doing uh, so that we can honor you and recognize you on Graduate Recognition Day. Please get that to me as soon as earthly possible. Be reminded that the popcorn sales begin tomorrow. Um, please stop by the dial room before you leave today and ask Dr. Twenty to help you uh, get on the app. And, 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 and there's another way that you can do it. If you, uh, for our senior members who may not be tech savvy, get somebody else. Give them your check and let them go online and do it for you. That doesn't, just because you're not computer savvy doesn't mean you can't participate in the popcorn sales. Yeah. Uh, get someone uh, who is in one of these organizations, write them a check for the popcorn, make it to Mount Zion, and then they will go in and place your order for you and your stuff will still come straight to your house. Amen? Amen. Thank you so very, very much. With appreciation to the Mount Zion Church family, thanks to all of you and yours for the act of kindness, prayers, and donations, and for the family of Mr. Andre Madison. We are deeply touched and appreciate the love expressed by your church family. May God bless you and keep you prayerfully, the Madison family. In addition to mission service today, um, today is Compassion Sunday for the African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina. I've been talking to you about that for the past two Sundays. I've asked you to pray about it and to see what your heart needs you to do, either as an individual, as a family, as an organization. Today is Compassion Sunday. Uh, on the table, on a table in the narthex, you'll see there's a Compassion International sign. And these are packets. Each of these packets represents a child. Uh, the cost of sponsoring a child for a year is $456 or $38 per month. Um, each packet has the child's name, it has the child's birth date, it has where they live. Uh, again, I'm asking you to pray uh, between now and the time that we exit this facility this morning uh, as to whether or not you think you can sponsor a child. If you uh, do want to sponsor a child, I'm going to ask that you pick up one of these from the table, meet me in the church in the library, which is the old finance room, Let's make sure that we get these uh, cards filled out completely. Uh,
part of when you will speak with you so that you can have your child's information. Uh, you have the opportunity to write to the child. The child will contact you at least twice a year uh, during the year that you're supporting this child. I'm asking, though, that if you pick up a packet, please be sure that you plan to sponsor a child. Each packet represents one child, and if you take this thing home and keep it and throw it in the trash can or put it under the cushion on your sofa, that child will not have an opportunity to be sponsored. So if you're not going to sponsor a child, please don't take a packet, because all of these packets have to be forwarded in Back to Compassion International so that they can go back into the database where another church can have an opportunity. These, these packets were specifically sent for Mount Zion. So pray about it, think about it, I'll be at the table uh, when you leave, and hopefully God will incline some of us, even maybe as an organization, a choir, whatever, uh, to sponsor a child, at least for the next year. Now, Compassion International is going to ask you to sponsor a child until they get 18. Uh, I am prayerfully asking you to consider at least one year at a time. Uh, after you do your one year, you talk to the Lord again and see where you need to go, what works for you and your family and your situation. And again, thank you so much for all that you do, for your prayers, your participation. Thank you, Women's Missionary Society. Thank you, everyone. The Apostle Creed, let us stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Uh, the mission statement. We are called to strengthen our faith and sent to continue the mysteries of Jesus Christ by service and witnessing in the word. The missionary benediction.
can we please have all of the WMS to come down front so we can take a picture before you all leave, please? I need all of the WMS to come down front so we can take a picture before you leave, please. Okay.